Not as well known as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. or Malcolm X, but New York City na native Clifford Alexander is a civil rights icon in his own right. Dan Bowens shows us how Alexander helped break down racial barriers under two different presidents. The pen that I have on the very top is a pen that was given to me by President Johnson on the signing of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Ink from the pens on Clifford Alexander's wall helped write American history. Underneath it is a pen for the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Those laws, both crowning achievements of the civil rights movement, ending segregation, banning discrimination in the workplace, and helping African Americans overcome legal barriers to vote. I use the term inclusiveness, not diversity. That's, that's for sociologists. The 84-year-old's life a testament to the fight for racial equality. Alexander graduated from Harvard in the 1950s, becoming the first African-American student body president. He did it at a time when the Ivy League school capped black enrollment at about a dozen students per year. Later, he'd also earn a law degree from Yale, all before becoming a top advisor to President Lyndon Johnson in the 1960s. I hope that I made a contribution during that time. The only African-American on LBJ's team, while the White House civil rights leaders and legislators engaged in tense debates about forming that landmark legislation. I did the contacts with the civil rights leadership of the time, Martin Luther King, Whitney Young, John Lewis, the young John Lewis at that point, Dorothy Height, head of the Council of Negro Women, Roy Wilkins, the head of the NAACP. Can you take me inside the Oval Office for some of those meetings between LBJ and these great civil rights leaders? Yeah, they were quite something. The chemistry between the people, uh, how they interacted on a practical level. Mr. President, you have to get the votes for us. Well, you know, in order to get the votes for you, you got to help me. you got to talk to the people who are their constituents. So uh, there were practical exchanges about under the political system that we have, how do you get a result? Not just a grandiose talk about, oh, we should all have a Voting Rights Act. Oh, we should all have a Housing Act. No, it, it went well beyond that into the nitty gritty of getting some Done. Let us close the springs of racial poison. And finally, they got it done. A counsel to the commander-in-chief at many pivotal moments during the civil rights movement. I was there with President Johnson in his office for a half hour before the appointment became final. The appointment of Thurgood Marshall, the first black Supreme Court justice. He was looking at a man who said to him, that is Johnson saying to Marshall, I didn't appoint you because it was good politically. I appointed you because you were like me. You were of the people. You could do for the people. You could understand the people in your rulings. And indeed with Thurgood Marshall, that's what you saw. From the historic Civil Rights Act, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission was created. As its first black chairman, Alexander made a policy of leaning on Hollywood, TV networks, and ad agencies to rethink TV. their approach. It was my theory that you want to talk about the inclusion of women and minorities in the places that set a tone for the society, where the society is displayed. During his time at the EEOC, the agency urged many industries to change, including the New York City subway system. They had done an ad with a subway, and in that subway, there were all white faces and very few female faces. So at the end of the testimony of that witness, I said, you know, it's only in your ad, or only in your ad, that you will ever see a subway car in New York City without minorities and women in it. So, in fact, that raised some of the awareness on their part, and they're doing a little better today. Leaving government during the Nixon administration, Alexander became the first black partner at a major D.C. law firm. He ran unsuccessfully in the District of Columbia's first mayoral race in over a century and hosted a syndicated news commentary show. Then Jimmy Carter called with a job offering the former National Guardsman the post of Secretary of the Army, also a first for an African American. Inclusiveness is something that says that if you see out here somebody and they can do the job, 
Bring them on in. By the time he left that position, 30 black generals were serving in the army, more than five times as when he started, including Colin Powell, who would go on to serve as the first African-American to serve on the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The qualification of Latinos and Asians and black people and women is just as great as the average white person or the above average white person. And we need to see to it that all of us get those opportunities and we have a better, a better service. You've lived this life of sort of promoting inclusion and being a part of all these moments. How do you square what you've lived about to what you're seeing today? I am frustrated because I think that uh, because I love this country, and you love this country, and all of us should, that it is better off if we utilize all the talents of the men and women who live in this country. We're a heck of a lot better off if we don't talk about Muslims as an excluded religion. We're a heck of a lot better off if we don't call Latinos rapists. We're a heck of a lot better off if we don't make a presentation about blacks as if we own them. We have to do a lot better than that. Hoping for a better future with lessons from our history. Dan Bowens, Fox 5 News.